Good morning, Crossroads Kids. Miss Patty here, ready to greet you. It's Sunday, June 28th, and we've been having a great time with you guys in Kids Club the last few weeks. I just want to remind you that you can go uh, and online and have your parents um, find the old, uh, old lessons, and you can watch them if you've missed any, and have a great time catching up. Uh, last week, we finished up our stories from the Old Testament. Actually, last week, we used a couple stories that Pastor Bill was sharing in his first message back here at Crossroads. But before that, we had been sharing stories from the Old Testament as well. And so this week, we're going to start off with a story from uh, the New Testament. Before that, though, I'd like to just remind you of some of the things that we've thought about the last few weeks. Let's see, we've thought about God being a God of power and a God of love and a God of helping. Let's see, can you remember any of the people he's helped in any of our stories? I remember he helped Daniel and he helped Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And let's see, who did he help when they needed some fire to fall to, to uh, convince the prophets of Baal? that God was all powerful. Was that Elijah? Yes. And he was the God of healing with Naaman. So there are some great stories that you can go back and listen to the stories and listen to the lessons. And you will be able to enjoy uh, doing some special activities and fun things if you haven't done these lessons already. So today we're going to jump into the New Testament. And as you know, the New Testament is the part of the Bible that tells about the life of Jesus and then how after Jesus went back to heaven, the church grew and developed and God's um, teachings on how to live as a successful Christian. So we're going to be starting our New Testament part of the epic story. So as you listen to this story, think about who God is, who he says Jesus is, and some of the things that God wants us to listen to. So let's just get ready to jump right in to a very special story about Jesus. So this story is found in Matthew 3. So if you're a reader, it's never a bad idea to get your own Bible out and read that story in for yourself. But Matthew 3 is this is where this story is found. And this story starts taking place after Jesus grows up. You know, as Jesus grew up, he did a lot of things that little boys and girls did around that time of around the town of Galilee, where he grew up in the northern part of Israel. He spent time with his family. He learned how to speak the languages of the day. And I am sure he played with his friends and helped out at home, just like I'm sure you guys tried to do. Even though he was God's son, he still was a boy who grew up into being a man. Now, one of the people that Jesus probably played with was his cousin, John. John was a few, born just a few months earlier to Elizabeth and Zacharias. And uh, you might know that story from the Christmas stories that we share. But John was his cousin, and so it's possible that they grew up and played together. The Bible doesn't tell us that, but I know that a lot of us, if we live close by, play with our cousins. So John probably did that, and chances are that Jesus spent a lot of time with John. I wonder what kind of games they played. Do you think they played tag? Probably. That's a pretty popular game that's been around a very long time. Anyway, when John grew up, he became a preacher in the area around Jesus' hometown. However, John wasn't your normal preacher or teacher of God. He was considered a little different. He did a few things that were a little strange. First, John didn't live in town. He lived out in the wilderness, not in any city. And he wore scratchy clothes that were made out of camel hair. Now, I have a picture here of a camel. And camels do not have soft hair. It's kind of scratchy. So you might not use camel hair as your first choice to wear. So, but anyway, that's what John did. He wore clothes made out of camel hair. The Bible talks about that. And then he also did something 
that was considered a little outdoorsy. He, um, he ate bugs. The Bible says he ate locusts. And so there's a picture of a bug. Now, I'm not a bug-eating fan. I know some of the, um, if your moms and dads watch those outdoor hunting shows, sometimes they talk about how you can eat bugs to survive if you get stuck out there. Well, John must have been stuck out there because he ate lots of locusts, the Bible says. And he also ate honey, which he got um, well, being uh, in the trees out there in the desert where the honey made, where the uh, bees made their hives, he got honey. And so there's a lot of nutrition between locusts and honey. So that's how he survived, but it not, not the most famous diet in the world. So John was considered a little strange because he did things like that. Now, however, even though he acted kind of strange, he still had something in him, in his heart, that made people want to come and see him and hear him preach. John went around telling the people that God was coming very soon and everyone needed to be ready for God to do something brand new. And because God was doing something new and great, everyone needed to be prepared by asking God to forgive them of their sins. And if they would do that, John would baptize them in the water. Now, there's a word for what John was wanting the people to do. And I'm going to write it on, I guess I'm, sorry about that. My pen's way over there, but I'm going to write that word on the board right here. John asked the people to repent. And what does repentance mean? I know some of you have heard us talk about this in Sunday school for a long time, and some of you may not have ever heard that word. But to repent means if you are going in one direction and it's not a good direction, God wants you to turn around and follow him. So if you're moving towards sin and a bad life, God says, cry out to me and turn around and start following me. And that's what John asked the people to do, to repent. So he would cry out to the people when he preached, repent, repent, turn back to God and ask for forgiveness. And so that's what they would uh, would do. And then he said, when you repent, I will baptize you in the water. Now, who knows what happens when you take a bath or a shower and water runs all over you? The water makes you clean, right? Well, that was why John was baptizing the people in the water. He wanted it to symbolize or represent that God has cleansed you when you ask for forgiveness of your sins and that is why people were excited to hear John preach. They wanted to know a God who could forgive their sins. One day, Jesus came near to hear his cousin John preach and to see him baptize the people. When he told John that he wanted to be baptized by him, John tried to talk him out of it. After all, Jesus was a man, but he was also God's son. Do you think that John had some sense of who God, how special Jesus was after growing up from him? And maybe God revealed special things to John that we don't have written down in the Bible, but he knew, he had a real sense that Jesus was special. And so John didn't want to baptize Jesus. He said, I'm not worthy of that. You should be baptizing me. But Jesus knew that this was an important thing to do. And I believe God told him to do it. And so he asked John, you go ahead and you baptize me. There's a greater purpose in you doing it and in me obeying and being baptized. Well, when John baptized Jesus, something truly amazing did happen. As Jesus was coming out of the water, the sky opened up and something that looked like a dove came down. So I have a picture of a dove. And a lot of times in churches, you'll see doves on the walls as part of the symbols. See, I guess he's, is that, yeah, that's he's flying better right that way. He's up, he was upside down. So the, pic, the dove came down and um, 
If you've never seen one, this is what a dove looks like. And this dove came down from heaven all the way to Jesus's head. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly beloved son who brings me great joy. Now, Jesus wasn't the only one that heard this. There was a whole crowd of people who had come to repent and to be baptized. And Jesus joined them in that act as an act of obedience to his father. And Jesus heard God's pleasure. And the whole crowd heard God's pleasure. This is my beloved son who brings me great joy. Now, just as the angels had announced the Savior's birth several years before, when Jesus was baptized, God announced to the world that this was his beloved son. Jesus had come to earth. God said, this is my son. God showed to everyone that Jesus was his son and God was very pleased with him. And so this was to be the start of Jesus's teaching time, his ministry to man and his preaching time on earth. And even though Jesus had never sinned, he wanted to be baptized to show everyone that he was clean from sin and ready to show people the way to walk and talk with God. So this was really the point where Jesus separated himself from just being viewed as a normal man to a, the son of God, because God declared it over him, even though even as a baby, he was God's son. But this is the declaration to mankind. Jesus is the way that God had decided to reverse the troubles that were caused when Adam and Eve sinned at the start of the, our epic story. This is the way that God was providing a perfect way for man to repent from his sin and to start following God. At this time, when God opened up the sky and sent a dove-like figure and spoke, to a, and spoke in a voice from heaven, God made it clear, Jesus is my son, and he is to be the only way to God. Let's pray together for just a quick moment. Dear Jesus, thank you for sending, uh, sending yourself. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to be a part of this story so that we can know you better. Help us to know how to know you better as we hear more and more about Jesus in your epic story in the weeks to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that was quite a story, the story of John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. Now, I wonder, um, I wonder if you guys have ever thought about what it means to be baptized. In today's story, we heard about um, what something that people can do to tell others of the way that they believe and how we feel about Jesus. And it involves this. I want you to watch. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit so you can see this a little bit. And this is the demonstration that um, I'm going to share with you to help you understand a little bit about baptism. We heard about John the Baptist and about how he was baptizing people. I wonder if any of you have ever been baptized. Well, anyway... The word baptism literally means to be dipped. Back in Jesus' time, the cloth merchants would color cloth dye by dipping it in water. So first of all, I'm going to pour some water here. And we're going to view it kind of like the merchant did. First of all, if he dipped it in, in water, the regular water, nothing changed. This cloth stayed white. But I'm going to put a little color, food coloring, in this other thing of water and let it mix around. And here we have the white cloth that's just been, been dipped in normal water and nothing changes. You know, when we try to change ourselves, 
Sometimes it's very hard and not much changes, if anything. But let's pretend that this water symbolizes Jesus and his power and, uh, and demonstrating that what baptism demonstrates is that we are washed clean. Something changes. We are changed. Now, if you look, we put our cloth in the baptism water that we made, and it is changed. You might not see that very well because I've got a blue shirt on too, but if you look at it, the towel is now blue instead of white. You see that? I hope you can. And you certainly can see that the water is blue and changed. And that's what uh, baptism symbolizes. When people are baptized, they walk into the water and dip under and then come back up again. And this is something we do to show people how Jesus has changed us. Like the cloth is changed, our lives are changed by Jesus. And when we are baptized, it shows that we want to obey Jesus and we want to follow him. Colossians 2.12 in the Bible says, When you were baptized, you were buried together with him. You were raised to life together with him by believing in God's power. God raised Jesus from the dead. And when a person is baptized, they go under the water in baptism, showing that they have died to sin. And that means that sin doesn't have to control them anymore. Jesus does. They've been changed. When you ask Jesus into your heart, you may not always feel it, but you can stand firm on the promise that God says he is changing you and has changed you. You can believe it. Things have changed. That means Jesus lives in you. Whenever you take a shower or a bath, you use water to wash away the dirt. And when you are baptized, the water is to remind you that Jesus has changed you and washed your sins away. There's another verse that talks about baptism in Romans. Romans 6, 4 says, By being baptized, you were buried with Christ into his death. Christ has been raised from the dead by the Father's glory. And like Christ, we can also have a new life. So John the Baptist was used by God in a very special way to get people ready for Jesus. I wonder, who first introduced you to Jesus? Was it your parents? Did one of the teachers here at Crossroads tell you about Jesus? Did you understand it from a message Pastor Bill preached or another preacher? I wonder who helped you to accept Jesus as your Savior. And if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior, you can. You can ask Jesus to wash you clean from the sin that you might have in your life. And we know that we all have sinned because the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. That's why we need Jesus. You know, when was the last time you talked to someone about Jesus? John the Baptist was saying, prepare the way for the Messiah, who was Jesus. When was the last time you told somebody, I know a Savior who could change your heart and he has changed mine. So it's important. John was very bold in his preaching. But no matter how we share or talk about Jesus, the Bible says to have an answer on your lips ready to share Jesus with those who need him. So the truth is, everybody's waiting to hear a little more about Jesus, those that don't know him, those that need to know him more. So if you have a ready answer, be ready to share it. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So I just want to take a moment to um, help you guys think about one more part of our, our um, epic story and epic lessons. And that is, I want us to think about a Bible verse. We have a Bible verse that tells us something very special about God. I better plug my computer back in because it unplugged and I don't know how charged it is. So hold on. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to turn this over here to this part of the 
So let's then move this over here. And if you, you know, sometimes learning to follow Jesus is a little bit of a puzzle. So I decided I would put our memory verse on the board like a puzzle today. So there, I think that works. And, you know, uh, knowing what Jesus wants us to do and knowing the truth, some of the truths about Jesus might be a puzzle. And sometimes when you do a puzzle, you have to go someplace to find the answers. Can anybody out there think and maybe holler at the TV screen uh, where you go to find answers about God? Hmm, I don't know. I can't hear you, but I bet you somebody was yelling out, go to the Bible, go to the Bible. And that's true. That is one of the very, and it is the very best place to find the truth about God. But we can also go to trusted Christian friends and family members who can help us know the truth. So I put this, the Bible verse that we're going to be practicing up on the board as a puzzle. And let's see if we can try to put it together. Let's see. Hmm. I know there's a capital letter, so a lot of times that works. This is, hmm, oh, okay, that seems to fit. Hmm, let's see. Oh, oh, okay. I think we have the first part of the verse. Okay, First John 4, 9. I wonder if anybody already knows that verse and is saying it before I the piece together. This is how God showed. Hmm, I wonder how what he showed. What did he show? This is how God showed. It just looks like it might go. Oh, yep. His love. Among us. He sent his one and only son into the world. that we might live through him. 1 John 4, 9. Pretty cool, huh? This God took one of the answers, one of the puzzles that we might have a question about and gave us a Bible truth, his truth, to give us an answer. God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. 1 John 4, 9. You know, when we heard our Bible story today, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, who brings me great joy. So who was he talking about? He was talking about Jesus. This is how God showed his love. He sent his son into the world that we might live through him. And then he tells us about that son. It is his one and only son that we might live through him. In other words, boys and girls, we... Take ourselves to Jesus and let him cleanse us from our sin. And then we can have the eternal life that the Bible promises by believing and following Jesus. You know, one of the questions we have is that Jesus asks us is, who do you say that I am? And based on this story, I'm going to say that Jesus, you are the son of God. You are the Jesus, the Savior, the one and only Son, that we might have life. In other words, that we might be saved. So you are the Savior. You are the Son of God. And Jesus, I am so thankful for that. Well, boys and girls, do you believe me? That's another question Jesus asks. He asks, do you believe what I've offered to you? Do you believe in it? Do you believe in my salvation? and my truth. And I'm going to say, 
Jesus, I believe you. Anytime I have a doubt, help my, help my unbelief and help me to believe you and follow you more. Well, boys and girls, I hope you have a great week. I hope you enjoy doing some of the activities or coloring pages that are attached. If you can get to church at Crossroads, we are having services now. But if you're still at home, I pray that you will stay safe and that you will be listening to the lessons online and have a great week. Um, let's pray before we close. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this week. I thank you for this lesson. It's so exciting, Lord, to know how Jesus started his ministry. It's exciting to know that you were well pleased to send him out to tell men about yourself and about your coming salvation through Jesus. So Lord, we, we praise you. We praise you for this epic story, which is just part of the big story of God's love for us. Help us to understand it more and more. And Lord, be with each of our boys and girls. We miss them terribly, but we are so excited that we are able to start gathering again. And we are praying for those who can't come out, that they will be safe and encouraged in the days ahead too. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Amen. Well, you boys and girls have a great week. I think Miss Michelle is going to be teaching us next week, so we're looking forward to a great lesson from her too. Have a great week.